Okay, we have sketched our vision. Um, I have chosen to do this vertical format. And sketches are wonderful. The reason we'll start a lot of projects with sketches is you, you don't want to be too self-critical about them. You don't want to try to uh, make everything perfect. You want that energy from it. And it also, it needs to come from you, right? Not from you, you're already critiquing what you'll be able to do. So now that I have that, I'm going to save it. This is my sketch. But if I were you and I had it in my uh, sketchbook, what I would do is turn on the FaceTime app. You might remember this from early on in the class. Get that camera on. Well, then let's say that this was my sketch. You know, this thing that's on the wall. Or that this is my sketch. Right. So then I hold it up, notice it's all backwards. And I hold down Command Shift 4, that three key shortcut to do a targeted screen grab. And I'm just going to grab my sketch. Turn this off. And then you'll see it right there. Then what you have to go is go to Tools, and you have to flip it horizontal. And then you can go to Tools, and you can say um, Adjust Color, because this is your sketch, and we want it to look really pretty clean. You can do Auto Levels. You can sharpen it. You can make it a little bit more contrasted so you can see your pencil lines, your pen lines, whatever it is. And I want you to, to grab your whole sketch, you know, both of them, just like this, your whole page. And then once you have that, that's going to be on your desktop. That's safe. That's actually something that you're going to put into Photo Bucket as part of this assignment. If you want to put a placeholder in to show that you're working on this assignment, you could even put that in today into the assignment one folder and know that you're covered as long as you have something in there. Okay, but then your next step is you're going to open that up in Photoshop, that screenshot, whatever that sketch is. And let's say that this was the actual sketch I wanted. You are going to crop it using the crop tool. You're going to roughly crop around the sketch you want to use. So in my case, it's going to be the vertical sketch. Hit return. Then you're going to go to image size and we need to make that sketch, which is just a, a bad, you know, monitor camera screen grab into something that's large enough for printing. So we want that to be around 11 by 14, you know, bigger than 11 by 14. So my height here, I'm going to make 14 inches. And you see now that's bigger than 11 by 14. And then the resolution, I'm going to make 350. That's our standard lab resolution. And look how blurry it makes it. But that is our print resolution. Then I can hit Command-0, fit it all on the screen. And now that means that when I bring my references in, right, like my tree coral, and I drag and drop them in, they're going to be it's the right native space for this size. So you can see that my high quality uh, reference material now matches a, a resolution that's printable to 11 by 14 inches. All right, so let me do that with my actual sketch. So I'll repeat all of that, close this. And if you were sketching digitally, you would do it this way. So I'm going to save this as it is. Let's get off the crop tool here. Save it as it is. But now I'm going to use the crop tool, and I'm going to crop around the sketch I want to keep. It doesn't need to be a, a tight crop. I want to get everything in there. Right? So maybe like that and hit return. Then I go up to image size and I make it 11 by 14. So it has to be at least 11 by 14 by 350. And I say, okay. Now, because I drew this digitally, that's not going to soften it quite as much. And because I drew it digitally, I might now take this and take its opacity down a little bit. 
just because that's a nice thing I can do with a digital sketch. And you can do that with your sketch as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is use my move tool. And you see how I have rulers on the sides here? If you don't have rulers, hit Command R and you'll have rulers. I'm going to click on the ruler and drag down a guide. And those guides should stick to each side of your bigger than 11 by 14 <laughs> image at 350 pixels per inch. That shows you what the edges of your image are. Now I'm going to go to image size or to image. And instead of image size, go to canvas size. And I'm going to grow the space around my composition. So to do that, I'm going to make the extension color gray. This is like putting your, your paper for your collage onto your drafting table. We need space to put all your collage materials on the drafting table before we cut them out and put them together. So we're making your drafting table here. I'm going to grow it from the middle, and I'm going to make its width 40 inches, and I'm going to make its height 30 inches. So 30 by 40 at 350 pixels per inch. That is our canvas size. And incidentally, that is the largest size you can print professionally on a four color offset litho litho uh, lithograph press. So there you have it. I have my sketch and I have my background desk, right? And I have guides that I can turn off with command semicolon, turn them off and on. I can also turn off my guides through view and say, you know, show guides or don't. I can also show rulers or not. With Command R, and that's also under View. And remember, all of these show you the shortcuts that we use. Okay, now that I've set up my table for my collage, I can bring in my five elements, just one after the other. And I'm just going to sweep them to the side for now. And you see how big they are. They're a good size. If anything you bring in is teeny tiny, it means it's not good enough resolution. Right? And it's okay if you push them off the edge a little bit. Photoshop will remember it even if it's off the edge. So bringing in all my different photo reference. That one's really big. And I'm not going to even resize any of them right now. Okay, because I brought them in, notice, just like when we did our shape tools, these are all, or when we did our cartoon jumbles, these are all smart layers, which means I can't delete from them, right? I can't, like, take this and then just hit delete. It won't let me. So once I brought them in and I see they're good, before I do anything else, I'm going to rasterize them. And the way to do that is tricky. Um, there's a few ways I can do it. So I'm just going to do the most basic way. I'm going to right click and then just say rasterize at their full size. Rasterize. 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 Okay, now I'm going to save this with a new name. So save as, and this will be my assignment. So Carl, always put your name as the first thing in your PSD files. Assignment one, um, fantasy landscape, and then I might call it, you know, underwater radiation. Something. To the desktop as a Photoshop file. Let the computer fill in the tag, the PSD tag. You don't type that. And then I always like to hit F11 and see that it's saving to the desktop. So there it is. Now I can start cutting out my sources. Now if you're making a collage, this is your paper and your sketch, and you have all your photos, what are you going to start with? Are you going to start with the foreground or the background? You're going to start with the background, right? The thing that covers up the most of your, 
your paper, and then you can build up on top of it because you have to cut that the least. So I can organize these now. What's my background element? Well, let's just turn these off. My background element is open water. So let me find the open water. Then I'm going to use the move tool. I'm going to have auto select by layer. And I'm just going to put that in. The open water is now in. <laughs> now I can hit command T and I can transform it. I can stretch it. I can work with it a little bit. I can warp it. But I don't need to right now. You know, so I'm just going to leave it there. That's done, but I'm also going to move it down in my layer order to the bottom because these others are going to go on top of it. And I might need to, you know, turn it off and on to see what's next. Okay, so from the far background, what's next? Well, the cement city is next. So I find that and I bring that in. And I want it, you know, fairly near the top. I know I won't want that diver there. And then I'll move that down below. Now, do I need to put it exactly where I sketched it? I can. And to do that, I would transform it and shrink it a little bit. Kind of put it in. So why not? And then hit return. But if you shrink it and hit return, remember it's rasterized. So. I've already lost a little bit of quality to it. Okay, next, the big coral. I find that. I think it's this one. I move it in. I'm definitely going to need to shrink this. So Command T, hold down Shift so it doesn't change too much. And it's going to go in basically here, right? Notice I haven't cut anything out yet. I'm gonna move that down. Then what's next? The close, the barrels. So they're right here. They go into this corner. Maybe shrink them a little bit. Something like that. Maybe tilt them. It's underwater. Okay. So far, so good. Move those barrels down. And then the tree coral, which I have to shrink. And just get the most interesting part as my immediate foreground. OK, so now. I have all my um, collage layers in there. Now I can start cutting them. So I'm going to just hit Command S to save. And now we're going to talk about how to make selections, right? How do I get rid of this water so I cut this out? And I have to get rid of that fish and everything. Well, I could just use the lasso. We've done that before with the cartoon jumble, right? And I could just lasso, this is why we have tablets if you need to, lasso around it really carefully. And you know what? For underwater, this might not be the worst way to go. And then just delete as I go. So I need to be on the right layer. So cement city and delete, you see, and then it will let that water come in. But another way to select large areas of open space that we've used before is the magic wand. Right? So if I use a tolerance of 32 with contiguous turned on, I can select this water and then delete. And it will leave little debris, but it can do a pretty good job some of these open spaces. Letting that other water come through. This is good for empty skies. And then every once in a while, you'll have to do Command Plus, and you see it leaves.